Surprise, motherfuckers. We're in person now. What's up, bro? For the first time ever. What's up, dude? Damn. This is cool. Man, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, a lot's happened the last few days. We said it, I think we said it last time. We speak into microphones and then things pop up again. Yeah, and here we are. I'm in your apartment. Meeting yeah. For the first time ever after having started a legally binding business partnership. Yeah, this was like love is blind, but for TikTok influencers. Yes, it's literally a blind. <laughs> yes, we were making exactly a right. TikTok grocery haul, and we actually looked like a guppel. We looked like a, gu- a at, straight California guppel. <laughs> at Sprouts. <laughs> and we were fit, and we were overly enthusiastic. And that is some... Let's talk about... I can't say... Why can't I say something without it being already... Something socially inappropriate. Have we As gotten a to gay the point? couple for you scholars that couldn't figure out what what couple meant? There, I but I was also going to say, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, here we are. Here we are. You said you had a point. question that you wanted to. Yeah, I'm just curious. It's just a goofy question. With. It's something to spark dialogue and conversation. I was about to ask you this in the car, and I said, never mind. I'll save it for the pod. Okay. Because we've been eating, we we're talking about your conditioning and like how well we're eating. Mm-hmm. And we've basically just eating, been eating meal prep, protein shakes, Zevias, getting an exorbitant amount of activity, activity for f- almost 60,000 steps in the last three days, uh, on average 20K a day, training our ass off. Mm. And we've just been eating really well. But we've also had some indulgences. Um, sure we'll have. talk about that later. But I'm curious, my question to you is, if there were no negative consequences, I'm just curious what maybe what old Yusuf was like. No negative consequences. Your baseline of well being mm-hmm. is what it normally would be. Mm. Your physique doesn't change. What would your day look like if you were just fucking off? Thank you so much for asking that. I'm so curious. I think everyone should ask a couple. There I think everyone should ask their partner <laughs> this question before they decide to consummate. You shouldn't be putting a baby in someone without understanding what your fit foods are and what your idealistic universe foods are that have no consequences or no negative health repercussions. And since we're a couple now, I need to know. Need to know. Yeah. What would my day look like in eating or what, what would it look like? I, in... I'm curious eating and existing. So like, what do, wait, what do you mean by that? Like wake up. What are you eating? How are you moving? Are you moving? Oh, what would my daily existence look like Just if one it day were no... In, in pre-Yusuf now era. Holy moly. But there's no negative consequences. So this is... So wait. When, and when you're talking about me specifically... You're also saying that, like, are you assuming that this person can do fuck all in the fact that they're also physically fit and can do whatever and do activities? Yeah, it's you now, but you can do whatever you want with no negative repercussions. Yeah. But you stay you now. Let's do it. So this is the first thing I would do. I would start off with a giant batch of mushrooms, first thing. (laughs) And I would – I think – are mushrooms carbohydrates? Very light, I would assume. A I think the macros. Vegetable. I think the macros are very light on that. And I would then go for two fair life shakes still probably because I'd want to start my day with some sort of physical activity regardless. And I don't think that breakfast is an ideal way. No matter what, are we counting the, the gravity of if I eat breakfast, will I still be physically enabled? Or like is, is this like a heaven I utopia said, where I said my food it's just it's utopia? There is no my, negative my food just disintegrates yes, in my body. Yes, you feel like you do now. This is no actually what. a concept. Uh, this is actually what the Quran. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not is Islamic um, in the sense that I know everything about the ins and outs of Islam. But yeah. if I'm not mistaken, this is actually a concept of what heaven is like. That you just eat and it just go. You it, you don't. There's no waste. If I'm not mistaken which I think is an insane concept. But anyway, um, so this is what you're describing to me. I guess this will be the next life, if I'm not mistaken. Still have veins, still have abs. Man, man, how cool would that be? Okay, so I would do, I would start with a Pizza Hut pizza then. I would start with mush, I guess then it would be haram for me to start with mushrooms. I guess I would just be that baseline in, you know, heaven. So I would go with um, Pizza Hut pizza, to begin and it would need to be garlic butter crust or some sort of something like that something buttery something buttery deep dish to begin and then i would go lift weights just because i'm excited i would lift weights twice i would lift weights in the morning for the edge and i'd lift weights at night because lifting at night is like a very 
it's something amazing to do in solitude sometimes, or maybe with friends, in my opinion. Um, that reminds me of like high school nights. I would, we, me and my boys would go lift at like seven o'clock. Yeah, and that yeah. was like our fit friend thing. Yep. I would skip homework. I would just game up until the gym at 7 p.m. And then I would just go to the gym. And that would be my routine. So I'd say morning, pizza, then gym, midday. I don't know. I think midday activity. Wouldn't someone just go to the beach? Depends on where you live. This sounds like a date question at this point. I'm just curious. Are you, are you going to know me? Because I've had the chance to see, because I've, I've been living with you for two minute, two days now, mm -hmm. and I've had the chance to see what's in your fridge, what's in your pantry, oh, how yeah. you exist in the day-to-day. -day. Oh, yeah. I'm just curious. It's oh, yeah. No one really sees how I live. Yeah. And now I have an intimate lens into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, right now, I live kind of like that fun existence because you, when you came in, the first thing you saw was protein donuts and meal prep. And the meal prep is really, really on point. Like it's stellar stuff. Um, chicken tenders basically baked into meal prep. Mm -hmm. Filet mignon baked into meal prep. Um, mac and cheese and bison baked into meal prep. So, so food that's loaded with micronutrients. And I literally don't even have to think about food at all whatsoever. Someone even asked me like, how do you set up your week? And I'm like, I don't even think about it. Like my food just shows up. And... I'm not sponsored by them. I just like the peace of mind that it provides me. It's incredibly it good. It literally too. just shows up and I just eat it. Nutrition solutions. I don't is even the company. think about anything. Back to the yeah. question though. What does the yeah. afternoon look like? I'm just because protein. You I just do it. I just I feel like I'm saying exactly what I would what I do now then. That's so interesting. Yeah, which I'm is interesting. well, besides the pizza, pizza in the morning, but the Yeah, is yeah. I that's the one thing that I would change then. And maybe I would train again in the in the evening for fun. Mm -hmm. And I would love to train with a view. That would be amazing. Training with a view with people that you love is actually, I think, heaven. Yes. That may be – damn, that's one of the most beautiful shit I've ever thought of. <laughs> so simple. And then maybe video games afterwards. That's, I would do that. That's a perfect day. Call of Duty. Maybe, maybe something outdoor. I've been going outdoors a lot more lately. Yeah. Just em enjoying being here in Southern California before winter hits. Mm -hmm. I, like, want to actually enjoy winter. Well, now that I've answered, I feel – because I would just do video games. I enjoy Call of Duty. I really enjoy it. And I enjoy it because it's very directed, directly related to childhood and focus for me. Like, I just like to be competitive and say my unfiltered thoughts. And Call of Duty is the breeding ground for that. It is absolutely nothing like a COD lobby. There's nothing like a COD lobby with your closest friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. And anonymity. Otherwise, you'd be in prison. <laughs> Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton. Otherwise, you'd be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. All right, so that's me. You've been here, and you've been. I feel like I've witnessed. I've witnessed you hanging out with me the past two and a half days. You've seen me and what I do, and what my what my waking moments are, and what my to the to my head hits the pillow moments are. We've spent pretty much each waking moment besides in the shower together, and on the yes. toilet together. Yes. So. With what your day in the life is like, I feel like I've seen you exist in flow. It was pretty cool. And also while going through a pretty shitty experience in life, in mm -hmm. my opinion, like pretty, like it, it seeped into me. So it's pretty shitty. It's like, cause it's, it, it, it's, it like, it's heavy and that stuff is just hard, hard to go through. So I, I, I and then I've still, despite that, seen you be pretty resilient and pretty optimistic. I appreciate that. Yeah. It wasn't without so, the bottom and honestly your help that <laughs> for, for us having met for the first time in person, I put you through a pretty heavy load of catching me at a pretty low point in my personal life. Just crappy timing. You know, Murphy's law. If something bad can happen, it will. And at the worst possible time. Mm. And so it did. And here we are. Uh, but you handled it remarkably. You, you, you really talked to me and worked me through it like you were a long time friend. So I do appreciate that. Of course. Uh, that being said, for anyone curious, if Yusuf lives – like the like he does on camera full time, he absolutely does. It just like wakes up, you just wake up, just ready to roll, like yeah. energetic, mind on a thousand, and you're kind of a funny cross between a really put together, organized, uh, regimented adult and a kid. Because <laughs> because it's like it's it's meal prep, protein, movement, morning electrolytes, morning sunlight, all the stuff that we preach, and then there's just hella energy drinks. 
and there's your PS5. It's like, it's yeah, like this, yeah, this yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting cross between my child PS5 view. and I have a basketball hoop on my kitchen cabinet. Yes, and I'll um, yeah, I think um, a lot of my childhood antics really have since being alone, dude, living on my own, like I, and it's just me. I no pets. I've done that very intentionally. Like, I remember it was always a dream of mine to have peace. You know the quote, if you've ever lived with your parents or you've ever had to move back in with friends because of a breakup, you know this exact. Nice. Excuse me. Pardon me. You know this exact saying, you can find everything at home except for peace. And I love my parents so much, but being on my own has been really fun and really freeing and really, really liberating, I think, in the sense that. I get to literally say whatever I want and I get to practice whatever I want, whenever I want. And, and that's forced also extreme accountability on me. Um, so let's talk about, actually, let's, let's, what would, so what would you do? What would your, what, what I've, have I seen you do your shit? Have I seen, sorry, have I seen you? Let me ask that more eloquently. <laughs> I've seen you do your shit. Sorry. I need to transition. Now. I've been talking to him straight for like, pretty much nonstop. So I need to, I need to, I need to professionalize my tone a little bit more. We need to podcast um, it up. Yeah. Um, hello, Michael's mom. I apologize. Um, sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. Sorry, Aunt Lisa. Have I seen pretty much what your ideal, what's been, what's it been like since you've been in San Diego? What's it been like since you've been here? You definitely haven't seen me fully in my element because I couldn't be more out of my element because I'm staying in someone else's home 2000 miles away from, I've got a week, I've got a suitcase and a shave bag. I've got a week's worth. I've got the essentials. So you definitely haven't seen me in my full peak, uh, what my perfect day is like now. You haven't seen me in a rain jacket yet, bro. You haven't seen how I put together a rain outfit. A rain outfit? Uh, nothing. Okay. We'll move past that. Is the question still, what would it be? Is the question, Have I uh, seen you do what you'd like to do? No. If The difference between what I'd like to do is a cross of a richer me and fit me now probably. If I could do whatever I want with richer in weight, like four, 50 pounds richer is what I mean. Um, the perfect day to me with neg no negative consequences would definitely be wake up. This is going to be brutal. Wake up, go to Chick-fil-A, two chicken biscuits, two hash browns. That's perfectly reasonable. Like chocolate that. milk. Wow. Uh, I like that thick, wow. creamy chocolate milk to wash everything down. Wow. If I didn't feel bad, that's exactly how I'd start my day. And what about breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> I dead ass had two breakfasts when I was 18 and I was thick in the hips, but it would be that. And then I probably still get more. I, I would apply some things what, I've did learned. Did you get now what I said? That I just liked. Did you get what I meant by that? By the by, what about breakfast? You said nothing like a thick and creamy chocolate milk. I said, yeah, what about breakfast? Oh God. You said to start my day too. Fair enough. That was Fair just, enough. okay. I Fair apologize. Enough. It went over my head. Um, I'd still do some of the things like you talked about that are part of my life now that I enjoy. I'd get outside in the morning. I would move. For sure. It involves training at some point. Lunch would definitely be a five guys cheeseburger and fries. And then a, probably a workout. What's your dessert? Oh, that's easy. That's easy as fuck. I have my whole death row meal planned out, bro. I know exactly what you I told want. You told me you have a bug out bag. I do have a bug out bag. If yeah, shit, if it shit makes sense you have your death row meal then. Yeah, I have, I have things what that in the have? worst possible scenario, I know how I'm going out. What do you have? In the death row meal? Yes. Okay, in the death row meal, it's very simple. It's very straightforward, and it's very good. Appetizer. <laughs> this Red is everything sticks. I do start to finish. Two beef eater martinis, extra dirty, blue cheese olives. I want three olives on the stick. Do not get, four, not two. Okay. I want three. Okay. I want two of those to give me a smooth fucking buzz since I'm about to die. And then this steakhouse in Atlanta has this unbelievable fried lobster and hollandaise appetizer that's so rich, and I want that. And I want onion rings. And then for dinner, I want a fucking 16. I want a 20 ounce ribeye, bone in, au poivre, medium rare. Au poivre. Au poivre means rolled in peppercorns with a cognac cream sauce for you uncultured fucks. I'm just kidding. Wow. Um, I'm just kidding. I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm going to have that yeah. lobster truck, lobster truffle mac and cheese, truffle fries. The, the dude who's going to have to deal with your shit. After when I die, pass. oh, he's, he's so he's he in is deep absolutely. Shit. They don't pay him enough for that. <laughs> yeah, wow. 
dessert would not be why would yeah desserts tiramisu no doubt it's yeah. tiramisu really uh, dude it's I it's find my... it too bitter and 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 bland you haven't had a good one then maybe that's it that's maybe. it i'm telling you you if i get the best tiramisu I've ever had in my life you can put two behind my ear and put me out of my misery i'll be happy what is it with every italian store or italian restaurant having the same three desserts I feel like they're all mid. I feel like the cannoli is the most mid dessert. Cannoli's mid as hell. Cannoli is the most mid dessert internationally, in my opinion. I think that might be the worst Italian contribution across humanity. Besides, I don't know anything else Italian. But the, the tiramisu and the cannoli, cannoli actually has to be the worst. Number one worst. Besides really strong cologne and really thick, shiny hair gel. Terrible Italian contributions. That's about all I can think of, though. Wow. I don't know that the Italians made that, but they sure do wear it. I feel like um, th- I'm not sure how – I don't know anything about Italian people. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I have a lot of Italian friends. A couple I, of Italian friends. I, I need to ask you something. Let's talk. Let's just transition to this. Okay. <laughs> We've been actually rambling incoherently. Mm-hmm. We've also decided to say we have a term now. We have a safe word for in case we ramble. Help me arrive. Do you want to explain the backstory behind that? No, I really don't. It's it's how a British guy were to say he's, 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 you know, reaching a point of climax. I'm arriving. Oh, I'm I'm arriving. I'm going to arrive. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Basically that. Um, And so, Sometimes we ramble and I, I, I thought of something and he, Michael had asked me something and I just, or he wondering why, why I was still going on. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't, I, I need you to help me arrive at a point that I help me arrive. And so that's, that's, that's what we're going to say now. It's a safe word. Help me arrive in case we ramble. From here forward, right. when you hear help me arrive, you know, one of us is saying, I need help. Help me I'm arrive. Too much. Yeah. Help me arrive at my point. Um, since being in California, working out in my gym, the compound lifting club. In San Diego, what do you think of it compared to regular commercial gyms like that you usually go to? Well, I'll tell you that Georgia sure is boring compared to Southern California. I'll tell you that. Oh, I yeah? definitely think that from a gym standpoint, it's a no-brainer that I fit in better there. It's just more people like us. Oh, this ser- gym, my gym. Yeah, the compound. Mm-hmm. Um, that are serious about training the gym. Everybody is fit there. Everybody's fit. There's already fit. It's Everybody's interesting. Fit. There's a very there's only a few people who are like in their journey. Yeah. <laughs> very few. Everyone's got can, like everyone's like average 12% body fat. And you can do whatever you want in there. You train with your shirt off. Mm-hmm. You can be loud. You mm-hmm. can film. And that may be intimidating or irritating to some of you, but for our line of work, that's pretty practical. So yeah. I've enjoyed that. I love Mexican food. That's obviously a huge piece here. The weather is perfect. The whole vibe of California definitely fits me a lot better. I feel happier out here for sure. I think mm. I think if I had all of my things and I had a home, right now I feel so detached. You're practically just like the people outside my my window. Yeah, I just you, have four walls around me. Yeah. Luckily, thank you to you. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel fragmented in a way because my things are home and I've got to, you know, I've got to handle that. And do you see this? Do you see moving to San Diego is the next logical step for you? Or what do you think? It does make it it's makes sense. Question. It makes sense. I mean, for our business to really flourish and thrive, we do have to be in the same place mm-hmm. at some point. Whether that's here or that's Florida or te- what tech, wherever we land, somewhere mm-hmm. cool happening with fit people and good weather. Yeah, and the opportunity to grow our business in person. We are better when we're t- together filming this way. I think giving to people. And speaking to one person is significantly mm-hmm. easier if we're together because our mission is based on uh, an audience member and it's based on an extension of us. And there's a group of people we're trying to reach and we found literally just through even our phones that we were able to align just through, I think, where our heads were at. And I think where our head is, we both get and we've found us to be very similar in many ways and very different in a couple of ways. And I think you've, you have certain progressions in your life that I've yet to make. I have certain progressions in my life that you've yet to make. And we've both kind of watched this like crisscross of our different places. 
because our life stories and our, our chapters are just a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, we're and we're both in like equal crossroads. We're both at equal transitions, and um, our priorities are in the same same areas. Um, of course, we're both damn near the same age. We're like I think three months. Yeah, we were we're, we're three months apart in age. Correct. Um, and what I'm curious about is based off of what you like about being able to um, work with me, do you see any other appeal to California's way of life and compare, or even somewhere else outside of Georgia's way of life, anywhere else in, in particular? Do you see an appeal to anywhere else for yes. any other reason? I think I'd be what, what specifically even more fit and mentally healthy if I lived here. I'd want to be outside all the time. I want to be moving mm. all the time. I'd want to be going and seeing stuff all the time. Yeah, because it's beautiful here. You Just said driving you, would, you said fun. you wouldn't like a, a high rise, though. Not here, at least. I'm just spoiled in the fact that for the last three years of living on my own, I've been able to step outside onto a back porch. Yeah, back yeah. Door. Oh my god, yeah. And it's it's really nice, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, to not have to hit an elevator every time you want to get up to the room. Oh my god, to have a big porch where see I can put people. a grill, see neighbors. Yeah. So I'm spoiled on the fact that I prefer the house setup or the townhome setup over the apartment setup. But of course, if this was it, I, mean, I really enjoy your place. It's awesome. It's it's very. How close are you to the city where you are? Twenty five minutes. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. To the city of Atlanta. Yeah, and I lived in the city. In what's the quirkiest thing about Atlanta? What's the What's the biggest thing that you would say is the biggest difference between Atlanta and here? The hospitality of the human beings, probably. Woo! He said San Diegans are assholes. You're all dicks. I agree. No, respectfully, not people at the gym, though. No, people, I'm kidding. People at the I'm gym kidding. are way, way nice. But people outside, people in San Diego who aren't super fit or don't surf or don't, um, that's about it. Yeah, the average Diegan fit. is, I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not outright, they're not walking down the street and flicking me off. It's, it, they don't uh, acknowledge your offering as a soul whatsoever. It's Southern hospitality stuff. You, know, you looked you. okay. So he he was walking up the street to get a coffee. We're both going up to this little cafe, and he, I thought you were really weird for just like saying hello to the first person you see walking out the door. And I went, "What the fuck did you just do?" No one acknowledges anybody here. Half the city's high. Yeah, it's weird. Literally, I grew up below the Bible Belt, man. That's just what you do. You you look strangers in the face and be like concerned no, about their well being. No, can't help it. Yeah, San Diego eye contact is a rarity, very rare, super rare. Genuine acknowledgement is very rare. Um, besides the Sprouts and Target checkout, besides the prices and some of the policies that would make our business a little harder to grow. In the state of California, some of the government policies, not great. Mm. California's perfect. Outside yeah. of those two things. Geographically, it's amazing. It's perfect. Ten minutes, we're, we're at Coronado Beach, which is one of the cleanest, nicest areas around the beach in San Diego. Fifteen minutes, we're in La Jolla. Fifteen minutes, we're in Pacific Beach. Twenty minutes, 25 minutes, we're in probably um, Torrey Pines area. We could go on a hike on a cliffside. And just just go trail running a little bit. We could do whatever. And even if you want to go further out, there's so much stuff to do out here, which is kind of crazy. I have not. I've had zero desire to go on a vacation because yeah. I'll just go, wait, I can just, but I can just go to the beach for a day. You live where people vacation. You yeah. Have and beach that's why I mountains. Those are the yeah, two yeah, yeah, vacation yeah, yeah, spots. Yeah, 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 yeah. An hour and I can get some mountains. Yeah. Literally. Let's Real get some mountains. mountains all around here. We're going to do an outdoor workout while we're here. At EOS Fitness, and then we're going to do a, a mountain hike or something like that. We're going to have to. I want to get out in the woods. Yeah, I haven't done anything like that. Well, we got desert here. We've got desert and mountains. Yeah, you're right. Desert that's, and that's woods. That's what we've got. Should we talk about fitness? Yeah. We, we haven't kinda, done that yet. Yeah. You know, for people who say that they solved it, we, we are sure quiet about it. I'm quiet about it in terms of my posting because I feel like I've already kind of respectfully – I mean, I haven't solved it to the extent that I feel like I obviously could if I were absolutely deliberate about a content plan. I post very little for someone whose income <laughs> depends on content consumption, kind of. <laughs> like, I just, I'm just not super, like, um, I'd, I'm not very heavy on obviously posting things that are like um, hardcore sales in your face. Mm-hmm. But for someone who, like, whose income does 
based kind of on content delivery. I don't be posting a lot of content because not lately. Yeah, I feel like fitness. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot. I'm like, they should get it by now. I feel like. But that's the thing, man. I, I repeat myself all the time and you always catch a new person. You always change a new life. Mm-hmm. This is just part of it. I made I made a video about protein and calories in four different ways. And every time 150, 200, 300 people see it and say, thank you. This is what that's I so true. That's so true. And you know what? Perhaps I'm, I'm posting for selfish reasons then. And I think that's that's probably going to take a little bit of internal rearranging and seeking to refix my priorities to be mission oriented again personally i like working vicariously through you though i prefer not to be super active on my account but i'll i actually prefer to help you with yours and just be like oh i this is perfect this is perfect because like for me the game is how do i like play into giving them an, an example dilemma that i'm fresh on because I've had people either talk to me about this specific topic within like a a challenge or a trouble or a problem they're dealing with. And it'll be like, you know, something simple like forgiving yourself. Something simple like just the the theme is probably forgiving yourself and someone doesn't get the concept of like, wait, I can make mistakes. And so like if that's maybe my theme for the week where like I've noticed I like want to solve that problem or I want to whiteboard it or I want to like, what are the trouble, I want to troubleshoot like what are the pitfalls that people fall into that stuff? I love drawing out and then I'll just use it next time and mm-hmm. I'll post it on my story. Usually that I find really fun. Um, but I almost, I almost enjoyed, enjoyed doing more through you. Personally. I've noticed that the last couple of days. Yeah. It's been really fun which is because cool your too. audience, you've got a lot of momentum going. You've got so much momentum and um, I post more. So I have to get reinvigorated to, to solve a problem. And, and, and I think that what we've, I think actually we, Well, probably I could tell, get into posting something that I think is going to be big because I think that's when I want to post. I only want to post when I'm going to deliver something that's going to rock someone's absolute vagina off or someone's absolute testes like through the roof. Like I, I want to show shit that like it just changes the, changes the direction of your life. I don't believe in posting otherwise, or I'll just post for selfish reasons. Like I took, I took a pump photo. And I'm like, this is progress for me. Post. You never miss one of those. No, no. <laughs> selfish reasons. And then people are like, fuck, I forgot he's still ripped. He's getting in better shape. I guess I'll hit him up. And that's that's I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm here to help. Like, you know I'm here. I'm all I always be your gym BFF. I would love to create a gym guide. You know what? In my time, in my time running gyms, I would love to create a comprehensive gym guide because it, there's a topic that does fire me up and it's running the perfect gym. I think that I'm super passionate about and I want to do. I want to run the perfect gym. And I want to create a place that you just don't fucking miss. Like when you when you sign up, you know you're not falling off your program or you know you're not quitting the gym. I want a gym guide that when you start or a gym that when you start, you know exactly what you're supposed to do and why. Mm. The people there know your story. The people there know why you signed up. But most importantly, they know how to keep you accountable. And I think that a lot of times, especially for women, it's the it's the relationships in the gym that keep you going and the little itty bitty progressions in your community, the girls that you see, the guys that you see, the people that you smile with, people that you help, the people that compliment you. It's those little progressions in your beliefs in fitness and your community that I think really bridge someone being, I never once thought I could go to a gym to wait a second, this is absolutely essential to me fucking existing. Right. <laughs> like I want to just be a fit person. I just want to be active. I want to really just feel great even at a baseline. Um, or I just want to get into the gym and build my body. Um, so I want, that's the type of gym I want to run, the type of thing, the type of play I want to play. Like that's the type of game I want to play. I want no misses. And that's, that really kind of kills me. And in because I want everyone to know that they can do it. That's why my bio, my bio is, I'm only interested in conversations with people who believe that everyone can get fit, including themselves. Because I think everyone outside that's to talk to is painful to talk to. And it's like, I, that's why I, and I, feel, I feel like I can't have a conversation. It sounds like annoying. I'm sure I'm just saying this is limiting belief. But like, I don't want to say I can't have conversations with people without bringing fitness into it. But I like want to give advice because I, I like to help people. And usually I'll just impose it. And that's fun. But um, 
I don't need you to help me arrive, but what I was going to say, I think I'm just going to keep to myself because it sounds like, I think it's more, I, I'm just going to pocket it because I'm like, well, I hold need to get outside to more. I need to just get outside more, dude. I need to socialize positively. We got humbled in beach volleyball by people who did not look like they lift. And I'm not going to lie. I was like, these people were really nice too. And I need to change. I ain't even more open minded. Well, we talked a little bit about, I had told you over our Zoom calls and all the time we spent remotely that I personally believed you were spending a little too much time on your own and inside in your apartment. <laughs> and it was a little bit of a Darko vibe. Just inside. Yeah, solitude. yeah. I'm super fo- – I, yeah, I do believe in the season of No by yes. Alex Shamozzi yes. where you just – where you hunker down and focus. I believe in Alex Becker's method of yes. nightmare mode of like where you like – it's extreme focus. Yes. And it's not, it's not meant to be a happy season. It's not meant to be a, like a super positive, go lucky mental health, mental health season. Get a dog, get a puppy, get a, get a girlfriend, get a family. It's not, it's not, it's not that season at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's for very, it's for Kobe 08 Olympics. Like it's like, no, just like that's, that's, that's like, that's like not even it's um to me in my life. That's what it feels like. I'm going for a championship. Like the thing I want to deliver on, I want it to be so big that people go, oh my God, you're the gym guy who made me, like you got me to do it, dude. Like those messages, those conversations, those shout outs, those recognitions, that's the shit that at this level of my gym career, that's where my, that's why my baseline dopamine's at. That's what I need. I need someone to go, you are why I go to the gym. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's what that's what that's what I want. I want like, um, I want, and that's 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 a tall order. That's a tall order, but I want it. Well, we, I mean, we get that sometimes. I think what the point I was just trying to it's make so is fun. that there is no better compliment than because of you, I did X. I did. It's, yeah, it's yeah. awesome, but it's also an honor and a privilege and a blessing to be able to have that ability. But I, I think you had talked about how you had gotten a little cynical on the average person, and yeah, I've definitely seen you be more positive and def- enjoy. Just getting out, hanging with Marcus and Dylan yesterday. Mm-hmm. Just, just chilling, just being with other humans. Because inherently, the season of no is important, and mine is coming. Uh, but we're tribal creatures. Mine is arriving. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. Um, mine is definitely arriving here sooner rather than later. But that'll we're tri- be interesting. We're tribal creatures. Yeah, I'm interested to see what I look like in that mode. What do you think about um? Have you lived with? Have you? I lived with a guy before. My old roommate Sohab, and you know he's got a really abnormal existence, mm. like at a baseline, like early morning get ups for like four years, has like a set as like a seven figure marketing agency, has a twenty six year old with like one employee or two employees, and he's like inspired four of his direct friends, including me, to just drop a lot of the excuses as to why you can't get what you want, and I've seen him through discipline. I told you my story of how I met him. I hired him at LA Fitness in Manassas. Yes. He walked in in sweatpants and a hoodie and just went. I don't, he was like looking for a job or like trying to become a trainer. And I, we go through the interview process and he just he drops like I want to. I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm like 25, 26. And I went okay. Like my trainer who works like 60 hours a week gets like eight grand a month at best. Like there's no shot. And I was like, you want to get into sales? I think. And then he was like. Okay, I'll talk. We'll, we'll, let's let's talk. And so um, he lives a really abnormal existence. that inspired like four of our friends to just go out and do the same thing and just you know chase your dreams and just shocker. He's a millionaire. Yeah, and he yeah he's got a really crazy story, and he just started posting content, kind of sharing his journey. I think it's really inspiring. And he in 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 a way, I even told I shared with you he didn't want to post content for many many years. And even the, his friend group who has a social media following, like his two closest friends have about 1.4 million followers in social media. And that's before like YouTube, they, they're like big on YouTube. So my friend was able to connect himself with really cool people um, in that sense or in that space by people who are subjectively successful in it. And um, now that he has those people as his friends, now he's posting. Right. And so it's kind of like this, it's a weird paradox that no one actually. It's it's like I want to get I want to get to the I want to get ripped and then I'll go to the gym. It's a really weird paradox, but hey, now he's doing it. But he got the business down first for content. Um, so I lived with him and he's at a really weird. He, he was just I don't want to say antisocial, but seasons season of no, that was like a a really. I watched it. I watched it for like 
three years and it made I, I i unintentionally live a very different life than most people um like the meetings that we got on that like we did today were three meetings like we actually at by like i think what was it like 1 p.m today was our first work day together in person it's monday mm -hmm. by 1 p.m we had done three zoom calls we had done one group zoom calls with about 10 to 12 girls on it we did that after our workout <laughs> Yes. We did that in the tailgate of my car. In the trunk of your car in the in the gym park. We just lot. opened my my tailgate, opened my trunk and just popped up my phone, did Zoom on my phone. We did 45 minutes and then we did two Zoom calls after that with people's people people afterwards. And at two o'clock later in the day, I had literally we were about to go on a run. Or no, was it one o'clock? We're, we're about to go on a run in Coronado Beach. And we just looked at ourselves and we went, Man, we're about to go outside, get some sunlight, and go on a run. Like Two people who don't have work meetings right now on a Monday. We haven't done any calls. We haven't done any meetings. I was like, yeah, we did. Wait, wait a second. Yeah, we've done three. But it didn't feel like it. No. It doesn't like, and so that 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 existence is like really weird and really rare because it feels like I'm doing nothing all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a there's a fear that comes, and I think it's more magnified in you because you're so driven. You're probably one of the most driven, if not the most driven person I've met in order like for a, a pure drive to be successful. Oh, that's cool. But that's good to know. You're almost, it is a weird life we live because I, I look up at my day and I'm like, what, if I actually worked because the feeling of work that I'm used to and the feeling of work, Icky guy, doing, this is the cross section of what the economy pays you for and what you feel you're encoded to do and what energizes you. Yes. This is what it, dude, it's weird. It's weird. It was a goal of mine a year ago to make this my literal, I said, I wanted to be able to go out and get sunlight. I want to go outside. I want to go run. I wanted to go just get tan. I wanted to be fit. I wanted to be ripped. I wanted to have an amazing life and then also just be on calls and be on meetings that I feel appreciated and that I feel like, excuse me, that I, I added value and that I was able to like move someone forward. Um, cause I would always, I'd always, I'd always like worked under people doing that, like other big influencers or gyms. I'd always write, ridden on the coattails of other people. Mm -hmm. And then to do it on my own was like crazy. Um, so it's like, actually now that you're doing it, what's it like? Dude, you showed me a photo of you that you got sent. Holy moly. You could not tell me that this guy was going to end up being a coach. Lucas, a fitness if coach. you're listening to this podcast, that was one of the more out-of-pocket things someone's done to me in a long time was sending me that photo right after I roasted myself on Instagram. But yeah, wow. I showed you a photo. I wish I wish I could. Do you think it's possible to show it on camera, up at that camera, Just and show see them. if they can see what from Show them the photo. I, there's Because what my question I'm about to ask you is how the hell did you go from that Damn. Let's see tell if I us can your, pull this up. Michael, tell us your life story really quickly from this point. Uh, this photo that you're showing me, because you sh you absolutely cracked me up when you said what you were about to go do when you um. I said got in this photo. photo, I was absolutely schmacked, definitely crossfaded, definitely had been crossfaded, consuming alcoholic beverages and devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce. <laughs> And that's what I look like. <laughs> wow, that's that is way clearer than I thought it would be. For you folks listening on Spotify, damn, none for you. So yeah, pretty rotund. Damn, buzz cut. If you had told me at that point you're gonna be physically fit, hey, you're gonna lead people to healthier lives. You're gonna you're gonna make content. You're damn right, I am. You're but, gonna run but, a marathon and you're gonna coach people. I would have said, Shh, I'm so. Are you even real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did so? Can I ask you a question? How did you go from that? to even being anywhere near my world as a gym person. How did you, how did you, how did you come anywhere near this? I've always dude? been inherent. I've always been overly analytical and logical. Like everything's always had to be stupid simple for it to make sense. For it to exist in my life, it has to be very A to B, very direct. I don't want any, I don't want to think too much about it. I've always been that way at everything. And I just didn't apply it to fitness. I always thought I was just gonna be the fat kid, but I've always struggled really badly with my self image. I was bullied when I was a kid because I was just a heavier guy and kids are dicks. And I've always hated the way I looked. It was always a baseline of knowing I just don't like this and I, it'll never change. I was just born as a big guy, mm. which bullshit, by the way, if any of you think that absolutely yeah. shut up yeah, respectfully with love. Uh, and then I found a particular YouTuber at the time. It was Greg O'Gallagher. No way, yeah. dude. And it was before he did all this mansion shit and all yeah, this yeah, flash yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was yeah, literally yeah. making videos, getting steps, talking about. I never knew he did that. This was 2017. So 2017. You can go back wow. and find his old videos on YouTube. He made 
he just set his camera up on a tripod and trained in his basement and walked. Mm. And it was on these walking videos that he would say, just walk an hour a day, skip breakfast, eat a, this much protein, 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of body weight, mm. focus on meat, eat foods you love. Like you don't have to give up the foods you love. And breakfast is the most more important meal of the day. And by the way, try to get strong in the gym. You don't yeah, train a lot. Yeah, just yeah. try to get strong. And I was like, okay, that's very Just a to B. take the basic tennis of becoming a fit person. Yes. <laughs> but I had never heard it relayed this way. It was yeah. all, all I had ever seen is that very toxic, silly gym bro culture of it's chicken and broccoli. Yeah. And chest six back days and buys. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all cardio. It's, it's been master, 30 minutes walking through. To this day, if that's what it took to be fit, I wouldn't be fit. Mm -hmm. That's so Nobody gross. would be fit. And you would be fit at the world's slowest rate possible. I think bodybuilders have a thing where they want to gatekeep fitness. They want you to believe that what I, they achieved is brother, so hard. I absolutely agree with you. I don't know why. I said this before. I would love to talk about the young LA situation. I talked about this before. I was going to make a TikTok on it. I got almost got inspired to do it. I was doing it and then my uh, – basically, I was going to say – I have always said it. Egotistical fitness trainers, fitness influencers are among the most psychotic of the population. Vanity-driven fitness influencers are among the most psychotic in the fitness space. They're not mentally well. They literally are not mentally well. A lot of these people have not been checked, and I've been one of them. A lot of these people have not been checked on pretty much anything regarding empathy. Someone tried to say that I was not empathetic when it's like, Dude, I have literally converted thousands of people into being fit people, and I've seen people turn like get off meds um, that are from chronic illnesses, and then also like things that usually end people, and then or that lead to that lead to chronic illnesses, and or um, any other mental health drugs or any other. Uh, 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 well, that's what they are. I'm not going to reward it. Um, so, with people that say that, like, um, and this is where I have a hard time, like. My view on why I think everyone can get fit, there's a lot of fit people I agree who don't think everyone can get fit. Like they really don't believe it. And it's kind of like a can everyone get rich thing, but would they or should they and could they? It's like not one of those like splitting hair things, but I think that uh, there's very obvious people in fitness who really just think it's just them. That like that like that's it. Like no, they're the I but I'm I'm going to be the coolest fit person. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many people knowingly, because I think I was one of them, and I, I think this is a, I'm not sure if this is just me, but I unknowingly put a lot of initially fitness influencers on a pedestal just because they had a big following. And I, I thought that meant that they're more knowledgeable. But what it takes to grow a fitness account usually isn't fitness knowledge. It's consistency in posting. Yes. <laughs> it's, yes. It's, That's it's, the name it's, of the game is just showing up. Yeah. It's consistency in posting. And so a lot of us misidentify as people who are incentivized to post social media as just authorities in general. You know what's a but good they're example? They're really just most best, but they're just best known. What's a good example of this is mm. you have not been consistent at all on TikTok for a few months now, a couple months mm. now, and we were just messing around TikTok living a, a mini basketball game over there in your kitchen. And I look at my live; I'm very consistent. I have a lot of momentum in the following, and there's 30 people in it. I look at yours, and there's 600. Oh yeah. And it's a matter of who's considered an authority, an authority versus who just keeps showing up. Is when you do show up, they go, right? Because mm. they're they're looking for the next thing you're going to say mm. because you're an authority. And that's the difference between mm. just being an influencer and being consistent and actually having to, having something to say. Interesting. That's really what I've noticed. Interesting, really interesting point. Um, in your, so in your, in, your, in your journey, did, we, did, did I fully ask you? You may need, help, you need me to help me arrive. Um, did, you I, asked, did I ask you how did you, it, how did you I, get I, to – I found Grego Gallagher and I realized that it didn't have to be hard. And I just tried, yeah. I said, fuck it. I'm tired of hating the way I look every single day, looking in the mirror. And always I would look in the mirror in the morning and be like, god damn it, just for a minute. Wow. And it was always there in the back of my head. It was always a confidence issue no matter what. And I found O'Gallagher back then and I thought, well, why not try it if it's that simple? What's it like being – pretty much close to what he's he's doing and in the in the footsteps just in your own way it's interesting i didn't think i've never thought about it like that yeah i think we do it better respectfully yeah i think um we're a bit of a interesting tool i think that so we have different audiences Fair. i don't mean to i don't mean to sidetrack i don't mean to sidetrack but i had an i had a little bit of realization earlier okay so given that we've both coached now each other's audiences literally we've met i've met people from your audience face-to-face -face on a phone call you've you've met people from my audience face-to-face -face on a phone call mm -hmm. 
uh, and we both coached them together. One thing I've noticed with your guys is that um, a lot of them need a hyper masculine approach sometimes. Like they just need to, some of your guys talk a lot and over explain things because they've thought it through just like you, because you thought it through a lot. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So you bring a lot of guys who think a lot. I've also been that. I also know that the answer for guys who think like that is just shut up and do it. It's yeah. not that complicated. Yeah. And a lot of your followers have needed to hear that. And that's where my punch has been really effective for your guys. Cause guys, your guys have been like, Oh damn, it really is that way. Okay, cool. That's that simple. Okay. All right. All right. Then good to know. And then for my audience, my audience is more female. Females tend to be more emotional driven men to be more logic driven or analytical. What my female audience is need, I'm very emotional. I would say, I'd say I'm more emotionally in tune than logical. Um, what my female audience has needed is the logical voice. So it's really interesting to see where our voices complement each other and where, so you have guys and I have girls, you have guys who are way too logical and they need to get, just get slapped. And I have girls who don't need to get slapped. They just need to be logical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they should be like, oh, that makes, and that's it. Um, so that, that, that itself has been, yeah, I think we, we can be cooler than Gregor Gallagher because of that, that, of the, of the, our ability to complement each other like that and cover just more ground, I think. But I think yeah. we, we can really genuinely help guys and girls better than a lot of individuals, just as two dudes. Interesting. I agree. I think sometimes I'm practically a chick at this point, dude. No, 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 on no, on no weird shit. I'm practically, a, I'm very, I don't know what it is about my, the, my TikToks or my Instagram. Maybe it's, I've been told it's because I'm pretty. That's that may, sure. Um, but I, I, I just attract chicks and you attract a lot of dudes. Yeah. We joked about it once is that you attract a lot of women and I attract a lot of Goggins archetype wannabe, yeah. or like not wannabe. I don't want to call anybody a wannabe, but I, I'm a Goggins wannabe. Is mm -hmm. what I mean is the archetype of what Goggins says resonates with you because it resonates with me, and that's the type of person that follows me. But I don't have mm -hmm. that delivery at all, so it's weird. Yeah, that that's what yeah. I've attracted. I love it; it's fun. Mm -hmm. But I think some people need to be told why, mm -hmm. which is where I come in for your yes. audience, and some some people just need to be told. Yes, and that's where you come in for my audience, mm -hmm. and I think it's a really good dynamic. That's why I'm also excited that we filmed collaborative content this week and that we're mm. filming in person that we're making tiktoks together that people know we're hanging out yeah and yeah yeah both of our flavors our, are and our way of life now is kind of like we've crossed we've hybrided our way of life now we did a really cool do you want to tell them about sunday i don't do, do you want to do you want to keep on the on your on your path to coaching and your inspire you want to or do you want to go into our hybrid of what Sunday was like for us, energy expenditure wise. No, let's just keep chatting. I think that we're kind of just breaking in the fact that we're in your apartment filming a podcast. So this is going to be just a lot more of us just chit chatting. Yeah. So let's just chit chat. So we, we had a bit of a hybrid strain of a Sunday. We had a lot of, we had activity, but we had warranted cheating in the morning. So. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? Dude, it was, when we were, yeah, we did kind of a food review. And I remembered, um, this one breakfast egg sandwich stand in Pacific beach that makes egg sausage sandwiches. And it basically is like, it's just a super rich, fatty, salty sandwich. It's so good. So good. And so we did, we hit our lift Sunday morning. We had an eventful Saturday Had a full, we went got dinner Saturday. Damn. If we, if I really want to get this right, I would love to start with actually talking about Saturday and dinner. Because dinner was actually stellar. Yeah, we. On note, that sounded guppel. It, it, everything it, we're saying is sounding guppel, bro. Yeah. We're living. I'm living on your couch right now. This the, is true. The point is, any, if it, the only thing we're missing to solidify it is me sleeping in the same bed as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did laundry together today too. We did. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I might have a hair in your in your shorts. You might have a hair in my shorts. <laughs> 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 Damn, uh, that's if about you know, as, you know. That's about as interesting when, as when hairs turn up in, in just the most inconspicuous places. Wow. Uh but dude, yeah. So Saturday was fun, man. We is that when I got here? Yeah, that's when you got here. We can talk about dinner, going into dinner. Because we okay. basically walked out of the house and we were just like, let's just see what hits us. We definitely knew we wanted a big 
plate of animal protein. This is true. We thought we about, about how we ordered and what we did and what attracted us and just let's yes. see what, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. Well, we drove around for fun. 45 minutes cuz we gave up the best fucking parking spot in the city. Yes. That was true. We tried to go to a steakhouse and we tried to walk in on a Saturday night to what is probably the best steakhouse in downtown San Diego thinking we would get a table. That was funny. We did not. We did not. So we gave up our parking spot and then decided to go somewhere two blocks away. Then we drove around for 45 minutes to find a spot to get all right, there. We don't need to give them all that stuff. Uh, it, it was just a funny principle. So we walked, we walked, so we walked up to, we walked up to two steakhouses. Yes. Right next, right next to each other. We, I've never seen Very different like vibes it. too. Super different vibes. One was Super purple. Different. One was red. Yes. And they were literally sharing a wall. It was two mm-hmm. steakhouses, like high dollar, nice places. Really interesting. And I, we walked up to the lady, the greeter, and I just said, so is there a relation here or is it more of a, a rivalry? Weird question to ask. And she said, we I thought, steak, we have a split test steakhouse. For, yes, you're right. Well, I thought they, I thought yeah. they may have been, I don't know, man. You're right. Maybe a it was a dumb question. Yeah. Um, and she said, no, we don't like them too much. And I went, okay, she cracked a joke back. Let's eat here. Mm-hmm. And we proceeded to sit down in a very, remember it was a very date nighty spot. We were talking about how date nighty it was. Yes. And it was a practically a couple at every table. Yes. And true. it was a nice vibe. And then there inside. was us. But yeah, we were sat in the corner right by where all the meat was dry aging. That was cool. And how we ordered dinner. And here's a good way. We will get some practical advice in this podcast. Here's a good way to eat out and eat, you know, like a king per se, eat mm-hmm. really well and really enjoy it. Stay on track. Yes. So here's what we did. We, they brought bread to the table. We didn't touch it. We got the menu. We got the menu. We get appetizers, entrees, and then we have desserts. Mm-hmm. So tell them how we look. And vegetables and sides. Yes. Classic steakhouse. You've got your proteins. Mm-hmm. You've got your sides a la carte. And then dessert options. The way we ordered, I like the strategy that you did with the appetizers and the entree at the same oh, yeah. time. Oh, yeah. I've never done that. Oh, yeah. I way enjoy better. that a lot. Way better. So we, we ordered it all at the same time. And we got the meatballs. It was an Italian steakhouse. We got the meatballs. We stuck to protein, right? We talk about being a protein-seeking person. Mm-hmm. So we stuck to protein as the centerpiece of the meal. It was meatballs, two ribeyes, two dried ribeyes that were, might I say, fucking Jesus. immaculate. Yes. Like actually so they good. They were the best steaks I think I've had in San Diego. They were unbelievable. For they they were, I believe, win. the best steaks I've had in San Diego. Yeah. And they were fabulous. The meatballs were good. And then we got Brussels sprouts, no oil. They were great. Mm-hmm. They were really good. Mm-hmm. And then the dessert didn't stand out to us. So what did we do next? We got – so basically we got protein appetizer. We got vegetable side. And we got two entrees that were just protein. And we had it all at once. And that is like the way to do it. Absolutely. Dessert, and I felt satisfied, full. I, and I was ready to eat again a little bit. Not in a way that like, oh, I didn't get a lot of food. It was like I had room to put away dessert and I would be full. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli, I personally don't want to describe the experience because I'll get reheated. Ghirardelli, get your shit together. Dude, oh, my God. It I was a mess. Beat, yo, whoever made your menu, I'll fucking beat your ass. I, yo, whoever this was, <laughs> whoever this was, the graphics team, the person who put the person on the graphics team, the person who was a project manager for the menu that went into your brick-and-mortar stores – I personally will fuck you up, straight up. It was like you trying- are you are Satan, aren't you? You want an elbow? <laughs> I, I you're, you you better hope I don't actually find you, dude. It was like project manager at Ghirardelli. Count your fucking days. You're you're fucked, pal or palette, dude. It was like trying to decipher ancient Sanskrit. Like it was it was hieroglyphics. Six, it was six major six large photos on either side of a large menu. And there was lots of little words on the lower half of the menu. Yes, lots of little words, different, very. They had twenty different Sundays. The menu said to me, "Don't think, order one of these six things." But if you don't, here's forty eight options. Yeah, they're typed in, and it's bright light, bright lights. It's like a weird funnel to the to the line, and it's like, and I just, you can tell them, you can tell them. We walked in and there was a bunch of artificial light, like you're sitting in an office in it's, 1992. It genuinely was stressful, and that's why I want. That's why. That's why I have two hands that are to and from the Ghirardelli project manager. It's because the it, the whole operation you can tell is set up to stress you out. 
Yeah. So you and just... I left. I left actually having, in my opinion, a really. I genuinely left dinner with you in a really great mood. Yeah. Like I think we had such a spectacular, spectacular conversation. We went to get dessert, which was just spontaneous and fun. When we went in, I could tell they were trying to plump me up and shove a giant sugar dildo up my ass, take my money. <laughs> That's what I felt. And then get, kick you the fuck out. Yeah, I like really just did not war. like it. I just told, I could tell they were just trying to uh, drug and abuse me. Yeah, that's that's exactly just, that's the cynical view I have about fit and, and like about going out. Sometimes is like, damn, where's the people? The, what the what's the first thing I said to the person at the at the checkout line? I said, can I talk to you about what we get? What do I get? Can I talk to a real human being? What what should I have? And he just like wasn't having it. If you clocked in at Saturday at Ghirardelli, I don't blame you. Fair at enough. 8 p.m. I, I don't I couldn't imagine. I mean if I mean then again I would love to be in a good mood if I'm working a job but whatever. Um but yeah I wanted to talk to him and I want to be like hey bro what do you recommend? Like someone give me a human touch on this. Like the girl, the reason why we liked the girl at the steakhouse house was because she played a joke that wasn't super positive. It was kind of funny. If she was like hey are these two steak house steak houses? You guys are the same? No we are not. Oh, no, we're not, or whatever. Like, sure, either, either way is cool, but if, if it's like, no, we hate them. Oh, cool, nice. Yeah, that All was right, funny. that's some human aspect of this. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're a person, not just an hourly worker. You have a soul. Great. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll be, I want to be here. Let's go here. Yeah, so Ghirardelli straight up got their menu crumpled on our way out. Yeah, Yusuf I just, and I stood there for a couple minutes and looked at it, and Yusuf just goes, you just go, never mind, and you just crumble it into a ball and throw it in the garbage. Yeah. And then we, I don't even know if that's what we were supposed to do. We just walked out. We just walked out. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't put it back. I mean, either way, the person who made the menus, again, it's one day del- delivery of hands coming your way. I would I love just, to beat that person's ass. I really don't. Yeah. Whoever, the people who, you know, is there a pro and a con? Is there a good and evil on taking jobs and marketing? Where you know that you're just gonna make the population stressed out and yes, order food. That's do what you, they do. Do you think that no, but do you think that they have a guilty conscience in knowing what they're doing? Like, do you think someone behind behind a corporate office was like, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna discombobulate the absolute living shit out of them and make them order the highest cost, the highest dollar, lowest um, the highest price, lowest cost item that is the, looks the most delicious and makes them want to come back again. Do you think that like they have a conscience at all in this, or what do you think they're thinking at all? Who's making these choices? Who's doing this? I don't know, honestly. Who's but they need their it? ass beat. Is it Warren Buffett? It's someone is it close Warren Buffett? to him. It's probably. coming from Warren Buffett's pocket pocketbook. He probably right? owns Ghirardelli. If we're being honest, whoever, whoever, whatever Warren Buffett company owns them. Honestly, your old ass. You're done, I, pal. I, I, I just, I'll see you at McDonald's, bro. We're gonna get a red dot on our forehead. I said, okay. All right, all right, all right. Already got the nutrient density chart. The FDA is gonna gun us down already. Yeah. It is okay. So we ate. So we ate. Uh, we didn't get dessert. We did get dessert. Actually, we got dessert and interesting. That was Sunday dessert, though. So then, so basically, do we just eat protein shakes and protein cake? We have protein cake. Yes. Yeah, so we came back and we, we ended up having bar. protein red velvet cake mm-hmm. and a protein donut. Yeah. Dude, can we Which talk? Can we talk about how we've basically? I don't want to use we, the term binge. It's got a negative connotation. Can we talk about how we, we ate protein, protein hoard, uh, We yeah, we 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 binged. Yeah, we binge ate. We ate for fun. Well, I think that we binge ate. I think binging is. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I think binging is dumb. I think binging on the wrong foods in a way that you absolutely are intoxicated is is genuinely like, like I think that just do the same thing, but with blueberries. Binge eating disorder solved, or am I fucked up, or not? Like, am I crazy? Halo top. Let's talk about what we did. What okay, you, this is your idea. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. If, so if you, so I'm gonna say I actually I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you talk on this. I talked a lot at the beginning. I'm gonna let you talk on this, uh, but I'm gonna blanket the philosophy because you saw it at the steakhouse. I would have done it at Ghirardelli if I wasn't about to beat someone's ass at Ghirardelli, but they fucked up. Um, but I did this with um, dessert. I do this with, with desserts all the time. What I do is I order one of several things, and I have a few bites out of each of it. And I usually don't keep all of it. 
but it's my way of having a new bite of something every time so I get the same new dopamine release. I'm a dopamine whore. I'm basically trying to extract as much dopamine from everything as possible at any given time. So my 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 intention behind a flight of meals, so like for instance, with um, the entrees at the steakhouse, what I did was I ordered the appetizer at the same time, the protein to get there at the same time as the other meats, the steak that we ate, the entree and the Brussels sprouts. So that I could always have a bite of four different things at once, which is like what you would get at a main meal usually. Like if you had a cheeseburger, you'd have seven different things coming at you at once. I'm really just a giant mouth whore. I'm, I like having as many different foods that are rich in flavor as possible so that my palate is always able to change something new. Yeah. I actually prefer that rather than eating a lot of the same thing. Yeah, I prefer that much more. So the, the theme was – and this is what we did with the Halo Top and the protein desserts that we have pointing ourselves – I like to eat a lot of um, variety and then then volume. I prefer variety and a lot of little things rather than just a heap of one thing. Right. So that's me. And you saw – you witnessed that in first person with the Halo Tops. Yeah. So if you want to speak so on that. So what it looked like in real time was I was Flight. baffled. The, the person who, who Uber Eats this grocery order for you was probably so overwhelmed. It was – he ordered I think six pints of Halo Top. Yes. And two kinds of protein bars. And I'll admit I've never thought about this strategy, dude. But like it was a fun way to keep it fresh and get the dopamine hits. And the ice cream is good. So that's, that's another thing we talk about is there's no excuse to be fat when protein donuts and Halo Top and good protein bars You have exist. no right to say that dieting is hard if no you right. have not seen steak and Halo Top and the Ninja Creamy and Fair Life Shakes. You actually deserve to get your ass beat too. Ghirardelli and people who complain that dieting is hard – when five generations ago, your great grandfather, your great 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 grandfather would just not eat dessert or salted caramel and be fine. But if you can't have it for two weeks, if you start fucking crying, you it's deserve insane, your ass beat. Insane too. concept. That person, that person deserves your ass beat. Your friends, you might know this. If you got, if you received this podcast and you, for, with no context, just know it was because, or if you received this in the form of a reel or a TikTok, if you received this. Just know that you got to send this because you complained about dieting and you should get your ass beat. Why? Because Halo Top exists and the Ninja Creamy exists and Fair Life exists and Steak exists. So you should get your ass beat. And it's probably the best thing for you. I'm just saying. I'm definitely clipping that up. I'm just saying. And sending it to a lot it's of the people. the best thing for them. And then, I'm, and then afterwards, I will, go, I will show you how to Amazon and find these things that I'm talking about. So from now on, when you want to binge, order five pints of Halo Top I am and take pro, a few I bites out binge. of each. I am I'm so pro eating order. I'm pro binging. I'm pro eating order. Eating order? Yeah, it's not a disorder, bro. It's an order. Oh, it's eating a order. <laughs> it's not a, people even eating disorder because like I, I'll I just the dumbest shit. The dumbest shit because like I, people think it's vanity that like when you re, you know restrict certainly or uh, in a certain way. With certain intention, like you low carb, and then you, like no, like the way that you eat when you are getting ripped is not the same when you are ripped. Yeah, you eat very differently. You that's can pretty so much. True. It's it's that's like a uh, yeah, that's a no brainer. Eating to get ripped, you should pretty much intentionally be in a deficit for the most part by byproduct of whole foods and seeking protein and front loading protein. But a after that, once you're ripped, like. It's protein, goal, mandatory, obviously. That's your baseline. And then anything else in terms of fat is a plus, obviously, because of your animal proteins. But then your carbohydrates, I told you this. I said I just basically do – and don't, don't model this if you're not, if you're not, I think, at this level. If you're at my level, model it. Have fun with it. But I think you could probably do well with it. You probably do a little bit of it. But high protein with fats that are from protein sources – and then I just do sugar, <laughs> good sugar, and then sometimes bad sugar. And I don't do very many grains. I don't do very many grains. Yeah, I've noticed that. Except yeah, for the I don't do bread in your meal prep. Yeah, I don't do I don't do much bread. I don't do much like um, I'll do breaded stuff, but I don't want bread or rice. I don't do a lot of it. I'll just no. skip it. Rather have chocolate. I have enjoyed the way that you finish your days with the sweets. You have you do have a crazy sweet. Every day I treats. do sweets now. Someone said, um, what are you going to do with the sugar addiction you get after eating crumble cookies every day? And I was like, what sugar addiction? I have dessert every day. 
<laughs> I, I know every dessert place around in a, in a 20 mile radius of my place. <laughs> I, I can show you my Uber Eats history. I take a photo of every dessert I get. I can go, I can post every one of them. He's not like, kidding. He's yeah. not kidding. Yeah. So, so, yeah, dessert. Let's just run through. You got like a strawberry, a red velvet, a peanut butter cup, all kinds of shit, a couple of protein. And bars. I have abs and I am not on gear. And yeah, and we woke up the next day and we were both lean. Ripped. I felt great. Like I yeah. trained hard. I felt really good. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of if we would have done that with the real the normal versions of that if we got six mm. pints of ben and jerry's a box of snickers Ooh, bars a I pizza a still pizza. be fucked up yeah pizza some yeah 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 this one bathroom would not be enough for the two humans yes we, we need we, we need to block we need to shut it down yeah. we ate one we ate the breakfast sandwich and that even kind of like hit us hard and that yeah. was, all it was was a lot of chip- chipotle aioli yep and that was heavy enough for the next day to have a little bit of an upset stomach just a baby bit yeah um so the halo yeah we got a we basically had two giant bites two giant spoonfuls from each halo top pint each halo top pint is 350 calories so we probably ate all in all together maybe max like 200 calories 250 from uh, sheer ice cream but we probably ate enough to fill in my opinion maybe like a maybe like almost a pint probably maybe probably a half a pint half a pint half a pint we probably each, had a each i would say we probably had a pint of ice cream between us yeah yeah and, and then we had light. each had a protein. It's so bar. light. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so light. And I felt good. And so it's just a matter of it's, it's literally just I can't think of another word to describe getting lean and but the hard part that everybody fails at. Staying lean is all about intention and creativity. It's a matter of whatever your favorite dog shit on no excuse to be eating food is, there is a proteinified version of it out yes. there. Yes. Like these donuts we got uh-huh. are actually the Holy best donut moly. I've ever fucking had. It's better than a donut. Protein donuts, please ship nationally, please. They are so amazing. I just posted it on my Instagram story. Like, mm-hmm. I, I want everybody to try them. They're Crumble needs a high protein option. If if they can make these, there's no reason they can't make cookies. Correct. Right. Yes. That would be make my life complete. And they're they we expensive. should make our. I think we should make our own. Drop a comment if you think we should make our own proteinified protein doppelganger. I would cookie. love for us to have a gym, and I would love for us to have a line of sweets and protein shakes for people because I think that oh. that's the thing that literally people need to know exists. Yes, is they need hey, to know it's real. People need to know that you can go to a gym and you can walk on a treadmill for fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. You can stretch. You can lift. You can get your heart rate up. You can challenge yourself. You can learn something about yourself. You can leave feeling proud. You can eat stuff that you like. And it doesn't need to be difficult. Like it really doesn't. The most difficult thing about it is that it might be new, but that's it. It just doesn't need to be difficult as long as you commit to doing it for forever. If that sounds crazy, you're a bitch and you're dumb. And you needed to hear that because there's no possible way you could actually think it's hard. There's just not. You just aren't smart enough at it yet, and that's fine. You nothing wrong be. with it. You will nothing, be. Nothing wrong with it yet. If you follow us and you're listening to this, you will have everything you need to People, know. That- it genuinely is an inexperience, and it's a fake lens on the world if you don't think eating healthy. if there's, I'm at the point mentally, dude, this is why I don't hang out with people who don't believe everyone can get fit. I don't. I just don't see an existence in where everyone isn't moving forward every 24 hours, at least in some way. And I say positively pr- progressing – I don't mean getting ripped and I don't mean getting abs and I don't mean, you know, thinking that you're a champion or you're Drake or you're LeBron. I'm talking about just simply knowing that you can eat positively and that you can train for yourself in a way that you know that you just earned everything that you did. Yeah. That's it. Like every 24, that's it. It's just, can you be mindful of your beginning, middle, end? And can you seek protein? And then if you eat, you eat. And then you just bounce back the next day. That's it. But that's the, that's the stuff that will bother me is people that, neglect to to try i i have to put the songs on everybody but i'm i'm all right i'm motivated damn it i gotta post you gotta post i want everyone to know every every 24 you can do it like i i'm actually internally internally my landscape is hell knowing that people don't believe that yeah it's brutal but yeah it's painful (laughs) and we're fighting an uphill battle every day that will never fully win we'll never inform everybody but that doesn't mean that's no reason to stop trying right because you're always going to touch somebody new. The young LA guy, I think, was getting mad about Jim Shark copying their their designs. And yeah. this is the shit I get mad, I get mad about. 
this is why I don't like posting sometimes. It's like people were posting is like I hate I would what I don't want is is to post just because I'm angry, but I am motivated. So it is good fuel. It is energy. Will you make a video tonight before we turn in? I, I'm going to. After we get off this, I'm going to make a TikTok. Yes. If I can think of something. Yes. You can think of something. Yeah. If I said make a video right now and put a gun to your head, you'd figure something out. I would, just, I would make a video. You got a gun in here? No. It's California. Definitely not. No. Yeah. Um, I was going to say my old roommate, so how about a Draco? But it's all good. <laughs> a couple Dracos. <laughs> but, um, so is there anything we're missing or do we want to wrap it? Um, first well, episode what our person. dinner's about to do, what we're about to do for dinner. Oh, what I already did for dinner. Yeah, rotisserie chicken, vegetables, ready hot vegetables from Sprouts, rotisserie chicken from Sprouts. And we have dessert. We have leftover here on top. And I think we might have one more thing. We have protein donuts. We've got eight boxes of protein we donuts. We're going to refeed for tomorrow, and we're going to do an, our our first evening training session, and we're going to record a lot of content. And I just want to give people a lot of the inside world of like, I, I'm smiling. Yeah. Like, I want, I want to show people that's my dream. Like, to get, like, that's like giving effortlessly. Like, what I am so passionate about and what I get lit up talking about is like why and how it all works. And like why and what it like just like all the cool 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 things about working out and doing it in the evening and lifting a body group that you really enjoy and that is ex- accentuates you like training arms man there's nothing like it and no I used to watch Mike Chang from Six Pack Shortcuts talk, I remember Mike talk Chang. about the pump the pump is the most motivating thing for the gym for the, in the gym a good arm pump and a lot of carbs and an energizing environment a motivating environment is and you know knowing that you're putting your best you forward that's like that's like the coolest thing ever that's like every gym person's dream is to show up for themselves the best way that they can yeah we're gonna be be proud of your presence we're gonna be delivering a ton of value this week to y'all we're gonna try to record a podcast maybe every day that i'm here for the rest of the week try to get five or six episodes out and yeah in person yeah yeah i'm pumped i'm make pumped some, to get the, the, get the ball rolling yeah make that. some collaborative videos we're gonna do some more content here so we're really just going to spam you with goodwill, value, and positive energy and give you everything you need to eliminate every possible excuse as to why you can't get fucking fit. Yeah, That's all that this is. And should we do, do cookies, brownies? Uh, should we do shakes? Should we do – let us know. I'll oh, look. yeah. Food reviews. Drop a comment. What do you want to see us no, do in this coming week? Should we make shakes? Should we make – Oh, yeah. Should we make – Protein cookies, donuts. I think we should do. I think we need to do something. Do we need to make a dessert, or do we need to make a shake, or should we just make a food line and have cookies, shakes? One thing we can donuts. promise you is it will be nutrient dense, and it will be superfoods, and it will be immaculate, and it'll it will taste be the good. best. Yeah, and it'll be the best. It'll be some. I want to. I want to topple first form. Okay. <sighs> should we do our first in person? I hate how like my comparisons, huh? Uh, no, nothing. I was. I, I hate I how I'm think. comparing myself to fucking Andy. Oh, Jesus Christ. That is odd day. I'm 26. I'm a child. You want to do a step check? My steps are my, my phone's dead, but I'm the same as you. Or I might have like five. How many thousand less? Maybe because you ran uh, and I didn't. You uh, About probably 6,000 less. Okay. Whatever yours so is. I did five 6, miles today. Uh, so it's 812 PST and I'm at 17,016 steps. Probably at 1112. That sounds about right. Yeah. Good day. We trained. Yeah. And we're going to hit arms and shoulders tomorrow and film some content for the gym for y'all. And this is fun, man. I'm this glad is, we're in the same room. This is the type of podcast I think that you could listen to like on your way to bed. I hope I so. Well, this is like a late night. It sounds like a late night one. It, it, it would it's definitely is a late us. night one. It's, it's 11 o'clock on yeah. my body clock. Yeah. yeah so I'm ready to eat, man. Let us know what you thought in the comments of the first in-person episode. Appreciate your feedback. Drop your step check and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, guys. All right, I'm ready to eat, man.